So if you've been checking out Xiaomi's new Super Value Redmi Note 11 smartphones, you might be a wee bit confused. Should I get the regular model or should I upgrade to that Redmi Note 11 Pro? Well, good news then, because Xiaomi has decided to make things even more complicated by launching a Redmi Note 11 Pro Plus model, which is strikingly similar to the Pro, but boasts a couple of big upgrades like 120 watt crazy fast charging and a completely different chipset actually running the show. So if you feel like your brain has taken a bit of a kick in and frankly you just want to hurl yourself into the nearest chasm, well, hold up. Let me take you by the hand in a friendly but purely platonic fashion and lead you through a full unboxing and tour of the Redmi Note 11 Pro Plus 5G. Don't forget that 5G bit because the name's definitely not long enough without it. And compare it side by side with the original Note 11 and Note 11 Pro. And for more on the latest and greatest tech, please do pop subscribe and ding that notifications bell. Cheers! So first question, what do you actually get bundled in the box? Well, perhaps unsurprisingly, there is a Xiaomi Redmi Note 11 Pro Plus 5G. You've got yourself a super serious 120 watt adapter. This thing is an absolute brick. Bit of USB charging cable action, sexy. And as ever, you've got a protective condom case, what you can wrap around your Redmi Note 11 Pro Plus and keep it safe. And that is it, that's the contents of the box. So let's crack on. So let's start as ever with design. And the Redmi Note 11 Pro Plus is pretty much identical to the original Pro and both of them at 6.67 inches tower over the reasonably compact 6.43 inch Note 11. It's quite a slab like design as you've actually got flat edges running the circumference of the smartphone rather than rounded edges. It's not uncomfortable to clutch though helped along by the fact you've got smooth rounded corners at least but it is a proper hand filler. If you want something that's going to be a bit easier to use one-handed I'd recommend the regular Redmi Note 11. There is a one-handed mode you can activate on all of these uh, Xiaomi smartphones, but unfortunately if you have the gesture navigation then you will have to have the quick ball active for this to actually work. That's the actual construction, well again very similar to its siblings, like the other two you've got plastic edging and then around back it is a glass finish. And as for the colour options, well this is the forest green model but you can also grab it in graphite grey if you want something a bit more austere, otherwise also star blue. And up front you've got Gorilla Glass 5 protection on the Pro Plus and the original Pro. The standard Redmi Note 11 downgrades that somewhat to Gorilla Glass 3 but should hopefully keep it free of scratches and scuffs. And you do get a screen protector either pre-installed or bundled in the box with all three. And the entire series is IP53 splash resistant as well so no worries if your outdoors get caught up in a bit of a drizzle they'll be absolutely fine. So let's turn our attention to the software and one of the annoyances, the ball aches with the Redmi Note 11 series is the fact that they're all running old Android 11 rather than the latest freshest Android 12 which has been out for months now. And even worse, while well, these two are at least on Xiaomi's MIUI 13 launch, the latest version of that, you've still got MIUI 12 here on the new Pro Plus. Of course the Pro Plus is pre-release at the time I'm shooting this video so hopefully that MIUI 13 update will roll through as soon as it goes out for retail but we'll see. And apparently the Android 12 uh, rollout should be happening soon. I think it's happening in some parts of the world already. No sign of it here in the UK just yet though. As for updates going forwards where you can expect all three of these Redmi blowers to get Android 13 next year and then probably no more OS upgrades beyond that and you've got around two to three years of security updates as well. I do quite like the software experience now on Xiaomi's smartphones. MIUI 13 does have a very stock Android vibe to it. You've got the likes of the Google Discover feed, you've got your apps tray on there. You can drag down the old notifications bar from anywhere on screen but then you've also got those bonus MIUI bits like the control center. You've got fast access to all kinds of useful toggles as well as your smart home goodies. Sadly not all of the bonus features work particularly well on these cheaper Xiaomi handsets like the Redmi Note 11 series. For instance the always on display isn't an always on display at all. You can only have it displayed for a few seconds after you actually tap the screen. And after the 10 seconds are up basically the always on display will just fade away so not always on at all by any definition. But for the most part it is all good stuff including the likes of the video toolbox which you can yank out when you're watching a bit of YouTube or whatever. This allows you to take screenshots and what have you. You can also enjoy a YouTube video with the screen off if you just want to listen to the audio while you're strolling down the street for instance. Yeah plenty of other stuff including the game turbo mode which I will definitely touch on later. However it's not all rainbows and hand jobs with MIUI unfortunately. For instance with Xiaomi smartphones you tend to get a lot of crapware packed on these things. 
And the Note 11 series, definitely no different at all. You got tons of random games like Jules Blast packed on here. You got LinkedIn, TikTok, Spotify, and the Opera browser, something called Joom, which I'm not even really sure what the hell that is. So basically, when you first go through setting up your Xiaomi smartphone, you will have to spend, unfortunately, a lot of time basically just uninstalling all of the random crap. Thankfully, you can do this without much difficulty. It just takes a bloody while. On the security side, well, all three of the Redmi Note 11 series smartphones have a edge-mounted fingerprint sensor built into that power button. And this works. A charm had absolutely zero issues with it whatsoever. Very responsive and fast acting, as you can see there. And you've also got face unlock support if for whatever reason you can't use that fingerprint sensor, which again seems pretty fast acting and reliable. Only thing is it also seems to work quite happily even if you're wearing a face mask and such forth so probably not the most secure unlocking method around. And as for the storage you've got a choice of 64 or 128 gigs of space on all three of these blowers as well. A fair chunk of that already taken up with all the many many apps pre-installed on here of course. Thankfully all three of these Xiaomi blowers also support micro SD memory cards to expand the storage however on the Pro and the Pro Plus model that micro SD slot is shared with the second SIM tray. So this is one area where the regular Redmi Note 11 actually has one up on its more expensive siblings because that does have a separate micro SD memory card tray. So now the display tech and as I mentioned before the Redmi Note 11 Pro and the Pro Plus have a bigger display versus the regular Redmi Note 11 but all three have an AMOLED screen. And that's great to see at this budget price point. It's becoming more of a regular thing, which is fantastic because AMOLED panels really are a step up from the basic IPS displays in many ways, including sharper contrast. You've got nice deep blacks as those pixels can completely switch off. Nice wide viewing angles as well. So it doesn't matter if you're trying to watch a bit of Netflix or YouTube with a buddy or two. The nice punchy colors as well. And you can tweak the color output if you like in the display settings, but I like it on the default vivid mode on all three of these phones because you get a nice punchy, really colorful poppy output. Only a minor intrusion from a dinky little selfie cam orifice wedged away up at the top end of these displays in a central position similar to the Samsung blowers. It's slightly wider on the regular Redmi Note 11 but not to a horrific degree. And it's a full HD plus resolution on all three of these handsets so technically the standard Redmi Note 11 does actually boast sharper visuals than its bigger brothers. But honestly the difference in the output is absolutely minimal between these three so if you are a YouTube fan, Netflix fan, whatever, you're going to enjoy the eye cam Andy on offer from any of these handsets. On the max style brightness, the Redmi Note 11 Pro Plus does seem to be a tad brighter than its siblings, but no real issue because the other two, the visibility is still absolutely fine when you are outdoors on a sunshiny day. You've got all the standard display settings tucked away in the menu there, including the reading mode to make things a bit more comfortable and easy on the eye in the evenings. You can change up, as I said before, the color output, exactly the same settings on all three. One of the only differences is the refresh rate where it tops off at 120 hertz here on the Pro models, whereas on the standard Redmi Note 11 that does max out at 90 hertz. Now all three of these budget smartphones sport a stereo speaker setup. You've actually got a speaker grill here on the bottom edge as well as that top edge. But there is a crystal clear improvement in the audio output as you actually upgrade through the various models. Here's the standard Redmi Note 11. Snapdragon 695 smartphone that I've had the chance to check out. and I So not particularly loud and the clarity ain't exactly fantastic either. Next up is the Redmi Note 11 Pro and again I've maxed out the volume. Note 11 Pro is the first Snapdragon 695 smartphone that I've had the chance to check out. And then the volume has increased a bit so it'll be a bit easier to hear what's going on if you are trying to enjoy some YouTube or whatever in a noisier environment environment and the clarity is slightly stronger as well. And then finally the fresh new Redmi Note 11 Pro Plus again max volume. 695 smartphone that I've had the chance to check out and I gotta say for a 600 series and hopefully you can make out there the audio is even more powerful you've got an incredible volume uh, here on the Redmi Note Pro Plus the clarity probably about the same as the standard Pro I wouldn't personally recommend listening to music or neither of them but certainly again for your video if you can't be bothered to plug in headphones they will definitely do the job. The difference is apparently made by JBL here on the Redmi Note Pro Plus it's even stamped up top sound by JBL so good job guys. I mentioned headphones before the good news is that all of these Redmi Note 11 handsets do offer a 3.5 mil headphone jack so you can just get a wide connection on the go otherwise you've got Bluetooth 5 support. In fact it's actually Bluetooth 5.1 you've also got Dolby Atmos support on those Pro models including this Pro 
plus here with a good bit of graphic equalizer action if you fancy messing around fine tuning that audio now just to make things even more complicated with the redmi note 11 series every single smartphone is powered by a different chipset the fresh new Redmi Note 11 Pro Plus is powered by the MediaTek Dimensity 920, the same as the Chinese model, incidentally. Whereas the global models of the Redmi Note 11 and the 11 Pro are powered by Qualcomm Snapdragon chipsets instead. You've got the Snapdragon 680 on the basic Redmi Note 11, and that's upgraded to the 695 here on the Pro. Now, as you can see, the Redmi Note 11 is the more basic of the trio, whereas the Pro and the Pro Plus, very similar performance from that Dimensity and that Snapdragon chipset. Those do have 8 gigs of RAM in these two Pro models, whereas the basic Redmi Note 11, that's only got 4 gigs of RAM in it. But you will be able to get different variants in different regions. However, it's 100% worth going with the Redmi Note 11 Pro Plus just for the name of the motherboard by itself. Piss Pissara Pro? Still, the everyday experience is perfectly smooth on all three, including the basic Redmi Note 11, and that more basic model can even cope with some light gaming on the side as well, a bit of Call of Duty, a bit of PUBG, as long as you don't go too nuts. I found that despite the fact that I'm pretty cack at games, to be perfectly 100% honest, I still managed to cap a few fools in the likes of the COD mobiles. Screen responsiveness is fine, yada yada. However, more serious gamers will definitely want to look to the Pro or the Pro Plus models instead because they can play anything out there basically, even the most demanding Android titles like Genshin Impact play well on the default medium settings. Yes, you'll see the occasional drop in frame rate, but nothing too horrendous. The games are perfectly playable and look absolutely lush on those large AMOLED displays as well. The Pro models also boast that liquid cool 2.0 tech as well. So again, the likes of Genshin Impact, they won't cause these phones to spontaneously combust if you're gonna be playing for a good hour or two. The phones remain pleasingly cool. And all three Redmi handsets also boast the same excellent gaming modes. It's a good bit of game turbo action which boasts lots of tools. It's more intuitively laid out than ever before. So for instance, you can swap from balanced to performance. If you really want to dedicate all of your phone's resources to your game, get the best possible experience. You can quickly change up the screen brightness. You can take a screenshot, record the action, all kinds of shenanigans. If you want to enjoy a bit of that next gen 5G connectivity though, you're gonna to have to bump up your budget a bit and grab either the Redmi Note 11 Pro or this here Pro Plus because they're the only ones that support the 5G, the regular Redmi Note 11 LTE only. Now the battery front is very interesting indeed because you've got a 5,000 milliamp capacity cell crammed in the original Redmi Note 11 and Note 11 Pro, whereas on the Pro Plus model, it's actually reduced slightly in capacity to 4,500. The reason for this is because the Pro Plus model uses different dual cell battery tech compared with the other two, and that's to achieve the ridiculously fast 120 watt fast charging speeds. So full charge of this bad boy will only take 20 minutes, give or take, which is frankly nuts, especially for a budget friendly blower. Whereas on the other two, the charging is slower, especially as it is a bigger capacity battery anyway. You've got 67 watt charging on the original Pro, you've got 33 watt charging on the regular Redmi Note 11. So the Redmi Note Pro Plus doesn't last quite as long as the other two under duress, but it'll still comfortably make it through a long, intense day with plenty of screen on time. And if it does run dry on you at any point, just plug it in for five, 10 minutes, that'll be hours of extra use. And apparently Xiaomi has packed more than 40 battery and charging safety features into the Pro Plus, so hopefully it won't just blow up in your face. Now the camera hardware is actually pretty bloody similar on all three of these Redmi blowers. The main difference is you've got a 108 meg Samsung HM2 sensor on the Pro and Pro Plus. That's replaced with a more basic 50 meg sensor on the regular Note 11. Now the camera experience is essentially identical on all three of these handsets. You've got the likes of the AI mode, the HDR mode, which you can activate up top. Actual focus speed seems nice and nippy on all three. You're not hanging around ages waiting for one of them to lock on. At least not unless the lighting is really low, in which case, yes, all three of them do struggle somewhat. Now, despite using that exact same sensor, the Pro and the Pro Plus do produce slightly different styles of photo, presumably because they use a different image processor. The Pro Plus spaffs out more natural looking images more often than not, although it also struggles a little in stronger light and HDR situations. While the regular Pro actually deals pretty well with sharp contrast and in particular captures some really nice day shots with a rich blue sky overhead. The cheapy Redmi Note 11 actually pumps out pics quite similar to that Pro Plus quite a lot of the time, with respectable tones and plenty of detail packed in so those photos look good when chucked up onto a big screen. Although where it really struggles is in low light situations, vomit out dark grainy messes even with the special night mode active. 
In comparison, both the Pro and the Pro Plus can handle those evening shots no worries, with the night mode making things even brighter when necessary. You've also got an 8 megapixel ultra wide angle shooter on all three of these Redmi Note 11 phones, which is pretty basic, but it can be useful when you want a different view of the action. And the final lens on all three of these phones is your basic bog standard macro shooter, whoopity doo. You've also got the usual selection of bonus modes, including, yes, fan favorites like the portrait mode. And if you hit more, you've got a good old selection of extra stuff. As you can see there, you can shoot at maximum resolution 108 meg on the pro models and 50 meg on the basic model. And you've also got a dedicated pro mode on all three of these blowers, although the Pro Plus does also introduce the option of shooting in raw image format, unlike the other two. And when it comes to your home movies, well, only the Pro Plus offers the option to shoot 1080p at 30 or 60 frames per second, or you can also bump all the way up to Ultra HD level at 30 FPS. So if you are the kind of person who likes to shoot a lot of footage of their everyday existence, well, definitely you'll want to upgrade to that Pro Plus model because the 4K resolution footage just looks so much better than the crummy Full HD efforts that you'll get from the bog standard Note 11 and Note 11 Pro. It really does make a lot of difference to those visuals. So yeah, if you want long lasting memories that aren't gonna suck, yeah, Pro Plus all the way. And last up, a bit of selfie cam action. It's a basic 13 meg effort on the regular Redmi Note 11, upgraded to a 16 meg shooter on the Pro Plus and the Pro. You know what, all three will do the job if you just want simple, shareable shots uh, that you can spaff out there on the internet. No worries, even in lower light environments, the regular Redmi Note 11 seems to do a decent job just like those Pro versions. And all three Redmi Note 11 smartphones can shoot full HD front facing footage as well using those selfie cams. You can actually shoot at 60 frames per second here on the Redmi Note 11 Pro Plus, whereas the others top off at 30 frames per second with the actual visual quality. No real difference there. And the audio pickup is fine on all three as well. So there you are, my lovelies. That, in a nutshell, is how the fresh new Xiaomi Redmi Note 11 Pro Plus 5G stacks up against the original Redmi Note 11 and the Redmi Note 11 Pro. And as you can see, quite a lot of differences between the three. It's a bit of a minefield, to say the least. In fact, forget minefield, it's a complete mind f is what it is. But hopefully this video has helped you to work out which one might be best for you. It'd be great to hear from you down in the comments which one you're more tempted by. You're going to spruce up for that fresh new Redmi Note 11 Pro Plus or you're going to try and conserve a bit of cash and maybe go with one of the others instead. Please do bash your comments down below, pop subscribe, ding that notifications bell, all the usual YouTube shenanigans and have yourselves a bloody wonderful rest of the week. Cheers everyone. Love you.